Welcome everyone. So today I'll be talking about the insulin administration. So in the previous video we had discussed about insulin and its analogs. So today I'll be talking about the insulin administration to the patients. So this is involving mainly three processes. First thing is the selection of the injection site. Second thing is the injection preparation. Third thing is administration. So selection of an injection site is very important because the amount of dose administered to the patient should be properly absorbed and the appropriate dose should be reached at the particular site. So this is important. That's why selection of an injection site is very important. Second, we have talked about the injection preparation. So this is very much required to avoid any kind of error during the preparation. Last is the administration. So what are the basic requirements for the insulin administration? So we know we require the syringe. So syringe is basically having four parts. First one is the plunger. Then we have a barrel where the insulin is being loaded. Then we have a cap. Once the cap is removed, there's a needle. Then we have the insulin. It can be in the cartridge or the vial. Then we have the alcohol swab. So the last one is the sharp disposal container where we dispose of the used syringes. So let's move on to the first step that is selection of the injection site. So there are mainly four sites at which the insulin should be administered. That is the upper outer arms, abdomen, buttocks and upper outer thighs. And we have to keep in mind each time we have to select a different spot. That is there should be a rotation within each time. This mainly avoids the chances of lipodystrophy, one of the main adverse drug reactions we had dealt with the insulin administration. Second thing is that we have to keep in mind is that one inch or more from the last spot. So each time when we administer or rotate, we have to uh, change the side by one inch or more. Second is when you are administering the insulin at the abdomen, two inches or more it should be away from the belly button. Next, we have to keep in mind is injection preparation. So first thing we have to do is that we have to wash your hands and injection site with water and soap and dry it well. And if you're trying to use an alcohol swab, let the skin dry completely before administration. So the third step involves a slow rotation of the insulin cartridge or vial between your palms. And keep in mind, we have to never shake it as it can form the bubbles in the insulin. So by doing this process, that is a rotation of the insulin between your palms, you are ensuring there is a uniform mixation of the insulin. The fourth step is wipe the cartridge or vial with the alcohol swab. So when you are taking the insulin, there are three things to be kept in mind. That is, it is the same insulin as prescribed by the, your doctor. Then the expiry date. It is very important that your insulin does not cross the expiry date. The last thing, it is free from any kind of clumps. So these three things should be kept in mind each time when you use the insulin. The next step involves take the syringe, remove the needle cap and plunger cap if present. So when you use a syringe, what things to be kept in mind is that make sure new syringe is used each time and do not allow the needle to touch any surface or allow yourself to touch the needle. Then do not use a syringe if the needle is bent. So these things should be kept in mind when you take a syringe. So the next step involves pull back the plunger to an equal amount of air to the dose to be administered. So that means if you are trying to take 15 units, we have to first pull back the plunger to approximately 15 units. After that, we have to place an insert. So what is this place and insert? So first we have to place the vial on a flat surface. Then at 90 degree, we have to insert this syringe that has where in which the plunger has been already pulled back after that we have to rise to the top press the plunger forward and take the amount of insulin slightly more than that required because sometimes there can be bubbles formed within the insulin within the syringe so in order to remove that we have to take an amount of insulin slightly more than that required and if any bubbles are present we have to slightly tap it and take an appropriate amount of the dose required so these are the eight steps involved in the injection preparation so once again wash your hands and injection site with water and soap and dry it well and if you're using an alcohol swab let the skin dry completely before administration then slowly rotate the insulin between your palms and never shake it as it can form bubbles in the insulin next is to wipe the cartridge or vial with the alcohol swab 
Then take the syringe, remove the needle cap and plunger if present. Pull back the plunger to an equal amount of air to the dose to be administered. Place an insert. Then rise the insulin and the syringe to the top. Press the plunger forward and take the amount of insulin slightly more than that required. This is to remove there is any kind of bubble formed and if so, just tap it and make the dose accordingly. So last process is administration. So this involves first wipe the site of injection with alcohol swab. Pinch a fold of skin 2 inch between the thumb and the forefinger. Then we have to inject the syringe at 90 degree. Press the plunger and administer the dose. Make sure the end eye needle is inserted. Then we can count till 5 and the purpose of this is to ensure complete dose has been administered. Then we have to remove the syringe at 90 degree itself and dispose it. And make sure never you rub or massage the injection site after administration because this could interfere with the absorption of insulin creating an unpredictable glucose response. So that should be avoided. So now we have discussed everything about the insulin administration, three main processes that is the selection of the injection site, injection preparation and administration. Now there is an important aspect of insulin administration that is storage of insulin. So it basically involves keep it away from the heat and light. That is it could destroy the composition of the insulin. Then the unused bottles, cartridges, pens should be kept in the door side of the refrigerator that is between 36 to 46 degree Fahrenheit. And remember never to freeze it. The bottles, cartridges and pens that is being currently in use should be kept in the room temperature or else it can be kept also in the door side of the refrigerator. So these are the various storage conditions to be kept in mind. And we had discussed about the insulin administration with the syringe. There are certain patients who prefer using insulin pen. So if you observe that insulin pen just looks like a normal stationary pen with a cap and a body. So when, when we remove the cap, we have got a needle cap within which we have got the needle. Then below that we have a needle attachment point. Then an insulin reservoir where we place the insulin cartridge. Then at the bottom we have got a dose adjustment dial. So here we have got a knob where we rotate it according to the dose required and below that we have got the injection button. All of the processes are exactly the same we have explained it with the syringe. So I hope you have understood everything about the insulin administration so the three main processes and how it has to be maintained. If there is any suggestions and comments please do mail in us. Thank you.